following is a presentation of the iRacing Esports Network. Good evening, welcome to the iRacing Esports Network, welcome to Monza and the BSR MX5 Autumn Cup. I'm Chaz Draycott with Alex Simpson on the cameras tonight joining me in the booth. We're at this fantastically uh, famous Italian Grand Prix circuit, Monza is always a, uh, a fan favourite. Lots of slipstreaming going on here and as we saw last night in the practice races for this very championship in the, uh, the BSR MX5 Monday Cup, there was, uh, well, a lot of that and the MX5 does punch a... Uh, pretty hefty hole in the air so we're hoping to see more of that tonight um alex we saw some brilliant racing last time out when uh, you and uh, tom and i did into lagos so a bit more slipstreaming tonight should level the playing field a bit yeah i think um in this little mx5 no first chicane or anything like that it's gonna be a bit of a lottery um to be brutally honest um they're gonna be literally slipstreaming on each other everywhere it's gonna be crazy we saw quite a lot of uh Sort of feisty overtakes last night as well down the straight. People couldn't decide which way to go half of the time. It was uh, brilliant to watch. A lot of position changes as well. There was, I don't think anyone was in the lead for an entire full lap on their own. Uh, you see the standings before you then in the pro category, obviously designated by those little blue stripes next to their names. The AMs will be green. And you can see Jack McIntyre is top of the pile from Stelian Chapolevsky and Nick McCarron. Those three all driving for Momo. And then it's two Swift Cooper Esports cars of Kip Cooper and Jason Cooper. Stephen Heffern and Jamie Ayres make it two more Momo cars. Then it's another Swift Cooper car of Luke Cooper in eighth. Peter Van Gogh is another Momo car in ninth. And Brian Holmes rounds out the top ten for Youth Energy with uh, team owner and teammate Adam McNally in 11th. Qualifying's just coming to an end now then. And of course teamwork will be very important for them all around here with the, uh, the slipstream that we will be mentioning probably all night to be fair. We did it last night as well. Scott Malcolm leads the way in an auto uh, auto Knock Hill 1-2-3 in the AM standings from his teammates Rob Graham and Benjamin Mears. And then it was the uh, three result clothing cars of Craig Jones, Carl Hardy and David Ayres as well. So those guys will be uh, hoping to get decent results tonight. Especially Scott leading the championship by over 100 points. One point between his two teammates. So it'll be interesting to see who comes out on top tonight out of those pairs. We're currently going towards the grid. Yeah, indeed we are. And um, yeah, I'm just... Um surprised actually how close and the fact that it's all the uh, automat guys right at the top so no um disrespect meant to them at all but i think they'll be quite surprised that you know it's one two three in that team championship so absolutely taking it by storm yeah they certainly are i mean to be fair if, if you would have been sort of watching the championship and not keeping up with the standings i probably agree with you and you would think that they'd sort of probably be near the top of course because they do get decent results but not the actual top three as well so it's a really really uh Good run by those guys. You see the grid then. You're going to have to quickly go through it. It's Dan Hunt and Adam McNally in the front row. Then it's Jack Ashton. And alongside him on the second row is Steve Hefford. Then it's Brian Holmes, Jason Cooper, Ryan Walker, Josh Thompson, Ashley Beard, and Jordan Giddings rounds out your top 10. And it's Pete Newman, Kip Stevens, Nick McCarron, Jamie Ayres, Peter Van Gogh, Alex Cherney, Charlie Summers, Mick Barry, David Hampson is 19th. New name on the uh, on the screen for me, that. And Luke Cooper rounds out your top 20. You can see the rest of them scrolling through now. A couple of uh, faster guys towards the back end of the field. Maybe penalties from previous uh, previous rounds. But here we go then. Massive, massive field of cars. You can see them all uh, spread out down the straight. There's the number 478 of Adam McNally, second on the grid. He's going to hope to beat that man, Dan Hunt, down towards the first corner. Obviously, no first chicane tonight. You can see that on the track map on the right-hand side. They are going straight on into Curva Grande. Well, hopefully, they're not going straight on in Curva Grande. We saw a couple of guys... Uh, clip the grass I think it was uh, oh, I can't remember his name now last night it was one of the new guys that came in I don't think he's with us this evening I think it was uh, Mr. Barber caught the grass going through Curva Grande with the uh, the left rear and well he just spun it around very quickly then the lights are about to come on in the first race of the evening we've got four races tonight and here we go Dan Hunt's going to lead them away green lights and they're away 
trying to minimise the wheel spin off the line. It's the two youth energy cars that are going to be chasing him down. They've got another one of their teammates behind as well. Brian Holmes is fifth overall. Dan Hunt goes to the inside to cover that line. You can see the great spread of different teams that are just staying near the front all the time in this championship. There's a big cloud of smoke. Makes its way uh, into the air behind them. Steve Heffard's coming through the middle. It's three wide already into turn one. Nearly catches the back of Dan Hunt's car. There's contact with Brian Holmes and Steve Hefford on the outside. Brian's going to want to not catch the grass, but McNally goes to the front. Jack Ashton, his teammate, is going to be second. Jason Cooper is coming up there as well on the inside. But that now that's going to become the outside as they go into the chicane. They're all on the brakes roughly at the same time. Hunt down the inside of Ashton, but there's your race leader. Number 478, Adam McNally. A lot of cars getting two-wheel action through there. Sounds like a bit of contact. Not sure if anyone's around. I think Cesare Rizzo's dropped a few places behind. A couple of guys going down the order as it stands. A couple of people just getting different runs out of there. Jack McIntyre, you can see in the Momo car, had a bit of damage there. That's uh, Max Wright in the number nine car. Back at the front then, this is Ashton in third place. Hunt and uh, McNally have got a bit of a run away from them as it stands. But Steve Hefford took right up behind him now as Ashton and Steve Hefford pulls out of the slipstream. It's going to be that oh so important word tonight, Alex. Is uh, It's just going to be slipstreaming from everybody. There's not really an option, is there? Everywhere you look, it's going to be the case, I think. So, yeah, just going to, um, it's just going to be no let up. It's just going to be relentless packs and snakes going around this circuit all the way. Uh, I, um, it's worth pointing out as well, there's going to be a bit of a, uh, bit of a policy change on um, sponsors moving forward on the American Sports Network. And I wonder how many cars are going to get affected by this. So, uh, yeah, watch this space. BSR MX5, the uh, announcement on that will be, uh, be up shortly. It certainly will be, and uh, I think, to be fair, a lot of these guys will obviously the Momo team, of course. Uh, I don't know what the uh, if there is any direct link to that, but I people like the, <laughs> the, uh, the Youth Energy team, of course. Um, I know that Adam has a lot of affiliation with the, uh, the people that are on that car. They're actual sponsors, and speaking of the devil, he pulls out alongside Dan Hunt then. Dan set the fastest lap on the first lap there, 206.446. You can see everyone, of course, setting personal best as it's their first lap. With Steve Hefford through the middle. Beautiful stuff by Steve, really opportunistic. He's around the outside. It doesn't seem like there's an overlap to Adam, but going around the Curva Grande, of course, the inside line is the favoured line. Dan Hunt trying to help Steve out then as they come flying towards the bridge then into the chicane for the second time. It's just two by two all the way down to the top eight there. Such a great shot as they all come streaming through there as well. Yeah, Give each other fun. enough room. Oh, no, Hunt. they don't. Hunt gets split by Ashton. He's been caught by, I think that's Thompson in there as well. No, Thompson wasn't off, actually. It's one of the uh, youth energy. It's Ryan Walker stuck in the middle of the track there. And he's going to be lucky to get out of that without any further contact. It's just the smallest of nudges, really, wasn't it? It wasn't too heavy, but just enough to send um, Hunt around and yeah, straight into the line of path of... Uh, couple of cars there and like you say we just collected into it to be fair it's it's quite easy because they um, they get a bit unsettled by those curbs anyway throughout chicane I mean it's quite a uh, famous chicane for just hitting the curbs and trying to keep your momentum up it's easy to uh, just clip them a bit too hard and I think that's what might have happened he just washed wide and like you say it was the tiniest of nudges oh Hefford compromises his line for Ascari there he might get a slowdown for putting that much of that uh, final part of it I think you're all right, well. just get an off track there, so he'll chalk that up. But uh, yeah, McNally looks like he was absolutely nailing it through there, didn't he? Lines were perfect and no wonder why he got that slipstream off there and already gained the position before they even reached the Parabolica. He certainly did, did a nice job of that. And you can see his youth energy teammates coming up behind him. Marco Barbonero just put in uh, his trademark ouch in the, uh, in the chat. He was uh, seeing a couple of them come up on screen last night. There were a few ouches, definitely. But look at the run Steve Hefford's got out of there. You can just see the massive difference in speed. And look at the gaggle behind. Really, really big gaggle of cars. Josh Thompson, I believe, leading the way in that one. It is in sixth place. He's got Van Gool pulling up alongside him now. But the three youth energy cars going for the lead here. They're going to go four wide, are they? Oh, oh that was sketchy. <laughs> Adam McNally goes over on his teammate there. That's Brian Holmes. I'm going to be speaking to Brian after this, so I don't think he's going to be too chuffed with that. But down the inside, it's Jack Ashton takes the lead. McNally's going to try and go for second past Steve Hefford. Oh, McNally clips the grass, though. He's going to lose momentum. And Jason Cooper's going to come into this one as well. Adam McNally's going to be watching his mirrors for Jason Cooper's slipstream. And he was sick of it after uh, Interlagos last week. I don't know if you've anyone seen it, but basically Jason took the win from Adam. Oh, no. Oh. Comes back out the chicane. I don't think Adam knew he was there, to be honest. I, I don't think Adam did because he just went for his normal line. But, yeah, there was the clear overlap there. 
And uh, Cooper did well, actually, not to um, cause a big wreck there. Yeah, he could have just carried on and turned him into the wall, but he didn't. So nice, respectful driving, really. But um, yeah, one of the uh, races last week at Interlagos finished with Jason Cooper winning it by a thousandth of a second over the line from Adam McNally, just getting the slipstream onto the straight at the right time, and he pretty much timed it perfectly to get it done. You can see the youth energy assault on the front of the field, though. They're having a great meeting so far. And I think Cooper's let him pass there, actually. He seems to have let off a bit. That was very respectful of him. Nice I think on the driving. that looked to me like he could, he could see that there was going to be an overtake there. And rather than fight it and lose time and lose battle and lose the slipstream, decided actually it would be better off just to tuck him behind uh, McNally there and um, stay in this fight with uh, a third of the way through the race already. Yeah, it was, it was sort of using your head in the right way there in that exactly. race. Exactly. He's just lifted again. Definitely, that is what he's doing right now. Good, sensible driving, I think. Yeah, it really is. And when we saw Tyler Lugo Vickery as well last night, he was uh, all over the back of John Roberts for the uh, the final race of the evening. And he wasn't even making contact down the straight, but he was just sticking behind him. And he ran out of fuel in the second race, so we thought he was just fuel saving, because that's what some of these guys can try and do. But in a car like the MX-5 and short races like this, you don't really need to worry about that. I mean, the, the extra sort of half a gallon you could take out might not make a difference, really. So it's uh, it's just more sort of positional tactics, I suppose. You don't want to be, as we've said many times when watching these guys, that you don't want to be that guy that is in the lead on the last lap because you're the one that's just going to get slipstreamed and overtaken. You can see at the top of the screen there, just as I mentioned before, pro category cars on the timing uh, tower on the left are the blue ones and the green stripes designate that they are AM drivers. It was the AM drivers that had their own sort of series breakaway last night and raced here. Adam McNally clipping the grass into the chicane there. He's got to be careful. Josh Thompson, no, sorry, Pete Newman, sorry, is uh, right behind these guys now in the uh, CQR car. Look at it. It's just become one big gaggle again. That just It just happened in the blink of an eye, really, didn't it? So easy to I mean, there was a good three, four seconds between them, weren't there? But yeah, that lap from um, Newman, yeah, he got himself a two minute flat lap time there basically well, two minute point nine nine so everybody else in the two ones two two so phenomenal lap from them must have just got the right amount of slipstream and um yeah caught onto the back of these guys and yeah we're on for uh what is a uh, just looking down the list 18th place before we get a gap that's over one second that is pretty mental to be fair and then also looking at times of the guys in front no one actually went quicker than a two minutes 3.3 .3, other than race leader Brian Holmes he did a 2.015 actually but the rest of them did 2.03s so it was three seconds quicker than the rest of them and Brian's still leading away from Steve of course but it doesn't really matter because every single lap and every single straight is just going to change over and over there we go again side by side youth energy are just all over this at the moment though but the, uh, the Momo guys and especially Steve Hefford are used to this the youth energy boys do work well together and uh well, it's usually Momo, Youth Energy and uh, Swift Cooper Esports that are near the front of the pack and they're just showing it once again that in, on a track like this where you've really got to, like you say Alex, use, use sensible driving and use your head to your advantage in this and just got to be in the right place at the right time. There is always that risk, of course, when you're on a normal track, different than Monza, but I mean, look at that, McNally through the middle with Jason Cooper. But now they're all even in speed as they get to Curva Grande, this could get focusing. Steve Hefford's just going to lose out, so I think it's going to go too wide. Yeah, McNally goes to the outside. Oh, Brian Holmes clipped the curb. I thought he was going to bounce wide into his teammate then. But this is becoming a real gaggle, like you say. We were looking at 18th place before. Kip Cooper is about two seconds behind 11th place now. So you can see that gap there on screen visually. Oh, Newman loses a little bit under the brake. Great car control there to keep that. I think if that was anyone else, that probably would have gone around, really. It's easy to do that, but great save and yeah there you go once again in that chicane just because these guys have got to sort of avoid each other you can see that it just bunches up and it's not always the straights that it seems to be happening on Alex it's, it's even in just the chicanes oh one of the Northern Lights cars off in the background there I think that was Jordan Giddings in 13th place number 23 car but um, yeah as I was saying it's, it's not always the straights that are the leveler now it's just avoiding each other in the really slow chicanes uh, and when it's busy when there's multiple lines being taken it's just always going to check up like that and this is why the guys can't break away um, and I wouldn't expect anything different. No one's going to bide their time too much here and let the um, try and let the front guys go away. They're going to want to be putting their nose in all the time. Of course, it is just a 15-minute sprint race, no endurance or anything like that mindset out there. It's make places when you can. You see an opportunity, you take it. That's for sure. Definitely the um, the Senna League of Thoughts racing style you need here. You know, see a gap, have it. <laughs> 
definitely. We, we've heard it as an excuse sometimes for incidents, of course, but oh well, you're going to uh, get it. Yeah, it's, it's that many times. It. <laughs> it's probably one of the most used phrases in motorsport things. Oh, Luke Cooper trying to use everything he can to go around. Uh, J that's uh, not Jason Cooper, that's Jordan Giddings, sorry, number 23. But that means he's got a really good run, actually, because he took a wider line. And I think Nick McCarron's noticed that as well, and he's trying to get in the slipstream too. They're all following uh, Kip Stevens in the, new, the number 11 car. Just down. Oh, that was a bit too close for comfort, that for me. Luke Cooper trying to get the slipstream off his teammate. Sort of pushes Giddings out of the way. And that's going to leave Giddings where he is. He's going to get the overlap. And going to turn one. Okay, the grande. Got to look at the front, sorry. I don't oh, 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 it's a good thing we did. Brian Holmes is around, catches Jamie Ayres. Oh, those two have just become teammates of Thrust Vector as well. I'm going to have to deal with that later. Oh, no. <laughs> The number 58, Brian Holmes. Number four, Jamie Ayres. Well, we'll be having words, I think. <laughs> Pete Newman up to third because of that. Then McNally fourth. Oh, there's another car off. That was another youth energy. Was that Jack Ashton? It was. He's flying down the timing tower on the left. Well, it's gone from bad to worse for uh, for youth energy there. They were all at the front before, and now uh, McNally's the only one up there in fourth place. Getting a bit feisty behind there between Thompson and Van Gool. Cherney's in there as well. Good to see his name back on the uh, timing tower. But it's the uh, the bright yellow wheels that seem to be prevailing at the moment. You've got Hefford, Cooper and Newman. And uh, yeah, those three leading it as it stands. We look back then, let's have a quick uh, ganders at what happened. Oh, Brian on loses. That curb, on that curb again. Yeah, and it did push him wide this time. Just to get another shot of that, if you can. Adam McNally, that was some amazing accident avoidance. Like, absolutely amazing accident avoidance. How he did that, I do not know. Watch this through here. Brian gets out of shape and he just goes, right, I'm going to go outside. Done it. <laughs> just, Perfect. That was, that was brilliantly judged. That was on it. I don't think you could have written that. Absolutely amazing moment. Now and down the inside of Newman he goes and up to third. I'm sure he'll be happy with his drive so far. Newman's going to do what so many drivers did last night and get the cut back. Out of the parabolica. It's a beautiful thing to do. And Jason Cooper and Steve Heffern have got no one to slipstream off, so they're just going to have a pure drag race down the straight. Behind them, it's, well, there's a the sort of centipede of three MX-5s that are made up of Cherney, Thompson and Summers. If I bring the battle box up, you'll see how much time they're going to gain on these two just down this straight. I mean, look, you can just see it, the time just ticking down. I mean, I left the interval one on the left just because it's so manically close and the battle box is pretty useless to us tonight. But uh, that was four tenths of a second just down there, you know, so just, uh, yeah, crazy. It can make or break a lap, can't it, really? Getting such a off time from Big time. This beautiful shot as they come down to the chicane. Look at the speed that they're doing. Just brilliant stuff. It's like the Freke Tricolori taking off the Italian display team. Oh, the human's been clipped, and that's not an Italian display team. There is plenty of smoke, but he's in the wall backwards, unfortunately. And he'll be gutted with that as well. And I'm sure that uh, Christian Rose will be as well. He's been giving uh, Mr. Newman all of the support in the chat at the moment was a clip as well I'm afraid that was the only way to describe it and uh, but it was enough oh. <laughs> and, uh, McNally deciding that uh, he wants a, uh, a new layout yeah he wants a wider Lesmo through there Josh, Shaw Josh shared all the uh, track variations at the start of the race in the chat well I think we need another one because McNally's now yeah he needs to uh, he needs to add that to the long and growing list I'm sure but he's lost a bit of time now to Cooper and Hefford, but Cooper's done a great job of working his way forward here. He's gained five places, but you've got to say a uh, quick word for his teammate Luke Cooper and uh, Char Charlie Summers and Alex Cherney, actually. They're all the Swift, Swift Cooper boys. They've gained 11, 12, and 13 places each. The only one to do more than that. Carl Hardy's gained 15 for result clothing. Mikey Key for result clothing. He's gained 14. Jack McIntyre's the biggest mover so far. 16 places gained. And he's in 17th still. You can see him on the... Uh, on the timing tower on the left We're still right in the thick of it as we go on board with Alex Cherney then that's his uh, teammate in front of him there pushing him down the straight you want to be careful though when you push these cars Alex because it is quite easy to uh, even if you just wash slightly across the back of it you can quite easily turn them around can't you very easy especially coming off a corner like the Parabolica where there's still a little bit of steering in there just rubbing the wrong way and uh, yeah in the end he's side by side his teammate they're both dragging up to um, McNally Nelly, 1.7 seconds back. He's on the absolute limit, I would think, of slipstream. So he is closing, but he needs an absolute stonking lap here to try and uh, get that gap down to um, Cooper and uh, Hefford. You can just see the visual difference. Look at that. Look at the overspeed that uh, Charlie Summers has got. It's just brilliant. 
If they've pulled up such a gap on there, and if he, he, he's got that done from into the chicane, and it's oh down the oh. inside, that was Thompson and uh, Stevens right. is there as well. Yeah, hello, Josh Thompson on the inside. He's not uh, he's not too afraid of doing that. I'm sure he's about somewhere. The three wide now, Luke Cooper, Josh Thompson, Journey. Van Gaal's going to be rubbing his hands together here watching this. Down the inside he goes, tries to get a place in Thompson. Well, the Swift Cooper boys they're trying to uh, they're trying Adam McNally's new layout. Oh, Luke God. Cooper does a bit of <laughs> bit of uh, rally cross there. That was brilliant. You want to put a jump in that gravel trap, lads? I think uh, Luke Cooper's just dug the foundations for it. Thompson around the outside of Angle as well. Great stuff by these guys. Wingmere is kissing down the straight and as they go into a star. Who did he think he is? Vitaly Petrov there, taking that kind of line? <laughs> Want to get some air and everything. Must be careful his wheel doesn't snap off in his hands like it did with uh, <laughs> Petrov. Was it Petrov in the Lotus? It wasn't Blazy, wasn't it? He, um, I think he hit one of the curbs that hard that the car went in the air and as he landed it ripped the steering column off in his hands. And he doesn't want to be doing that in this, especially if it, <laughs> you, wouldn't want, you wouldn't expect it to come off his desk, I suppose, would you? But um, Cherny then up to seventh. He's the winner in that. Luke Cooper using the uh, extra bit of ground to make up some speed. But this will be the final lap, I'm pretty sure, this time round. And we see Jason Cooper then down the inside of Steve Hefford. My yellow wheels are going to cross the line ahead of your yellow wheels. Stephen Hefford using every bit of track he can. He's got a great overlap. And I think he might just about do it, Alex. We're going to have to see what he can do. He looks like he's ahead and he does it. Yeah, Steve Hefford takes the win then. Great stuff. Charlie Summers third. Kip Stevens fourth, Adam McNally fifth, Luke Cooper sixth, Alex Cherney seventh. That's a fantastic result for Swift Cooper Esports. They've got five cars in the top seven. Absolutely immense drive by all those guys to get that many points on the board. They'll be chuffed with that one. You can see just how even the spread of the field is, really, as they come across the line in the background. That's Craig Williams and Carl Hardy. Pete Newman really good for him as well after that incident. It's a shame as well that uh, Chris had that go on. I'm sure he'll... Uh, Chris will be well he'll be fuming in the chat but we'll obviously try and have a look at it now it was a close finish of course four hundredths of a second in it but still nothing on the uh, the one thousandth of a second that we got from uh, Interlagos last week but that was a really good first race that it flew by as they as they quite usually do in this series Alex yeah I mean oh 15 minutes <laughs> 15 minutes out of nowhere really wasn't it just a bush gone and uh, yeah crazy Bosch gone, it's Josh Thompson there. Bosch Thompson, as uh, as he was called the other day. I can't remember who by. Just trying to find... Um... Ah, here we go. Yeah, this is just a replay while we're just waiting for the final results to come in, as there was the request to see it. Ah, oh, it was just the merest of nicks. Let's have a look at it again. We'll um, do a very um, untraditional camera angle, just for the uh, sake of the replay. And... Uh, yeah, there's not much in that though, really, is there? You got no. that's going to be classed as a racing incident all the all way, all day long, unfortunately. I think Adam tried to get it on the inside as best he can to give Pete the room, but it just, I just a tiny bit wide. I mean, there wasn't really any room to the curb either. He he pretty much nearly clipped it. So uh, it's a shame that it happens that way, but it is the slightest of taps you need in this MX-5 with it being rear-wheel drive. You can upset it and all the weights at the front, obviously, with the engine. So it's uh, it's easy to spin it around, obviously, at the benefit of donuts. Steve Hefford takes the win then from three Swift Cooper esports cars. Jason Cooper, Charlie Summers and Kip Stevens. Adam McNally is fifth with Luke Cooper and Alex Cherney, the other two Swift Cooper esports in the uh, top seven there. Fantastic for them. Pete Van Gogh is eighth with Josh Thompson ninth. And rounding out your top ten, actually, David Hampson. He wins the AM category in that one. So great drive by David. I think he uh, gained nine places in that one. So he'll be really happy with that. I think that's his first appearance in the championship as well in the Triple Eight car. So well done to David. Nick McCarran is 11th for Momo. Jordan Giddings is 12th for Northern Lights, and Carl Jacolette is 13th, second in the AM category for Simortal. Ashley Beard is uh, 14th, Jack Ashton recovers to 15th, Max Wright is 16th, Jack McIntyre 17th, great drive by him, he gained, oh, where's he gone, 16 places tonight, and Alan McCain is 3rd in the AM category, 18th overall. Scrolling on down then, Dan Hunt is 19th, with Jamie Ayres 20th, Carl Hardy 21st, Craig Williams finishes 22nd, Mick Barry is 23rd with Benjamin Mears 24th. Mikel Garcia is 25th. Mikey Key 26th. Pete Newman eventually crossing the line in 27th. They'll be hoping for a uh, 28 or 26 reverse grid if we get them. Scott Malcolm, uh, sorry, Tyler Lugavickery, 28th there. Uh, Scott Malcolm 29th. Joe McDonald is 30th. Then you've got Brian Holmes. We got it after that incident earlier with Craig Jones, Jerome Ersam, Anthony Mott, Nathan Davis, and David Ayres bringing up the rear of the field. Actually, there's a few more, sorry. I apologize. Getting a little bit ahead of myself there. James McRitchie, if I can get his name right, is 37th. Ryan Walker, 38th. Anwar Smith, 39th. 
And you've got Cesare Rizzo in the triple six, Peter Knowles in the triple two, and Rivas Cisnes in the 92. I'm really sorry if I butchered that name. Don't think he's it to start, did he? Actually, uh, actually, no, I don't think he did. Or Peter Knowles, actually. Doesn't look like it by the screen. Yeah, I don't think Cesare Rizzo did either, actually, because it's a 16 minutes 52 behind. So that's pretty much the length of the race. But it was an exciting first one, though. Plenty of overtaking. There was actually a lot of really good driving in that. I mean, the odd incident happened, but it's just sort of the small mistakes that you can make at these sort of speeds, especially in the MX-5. It's not really a car that's suited to this track, but the racing provided is brilliant. We see Hefford then pulling that final move. I think, to be fair, Jason could have stayed over to the right a little bit more and he might have just shortened the run to the line, but Heff did a great job there. He'll be very happy to have pulled that manoeuvre off to get the win. And I'm sure he'll be hoping for more of the same in uh, races 2, 3 and 4 this evening. So, I believe it will be time now, Alex, for the, uh, the reverse grid wheel, will it not? Yeah, indeed it will. Just watch this from on board one final time and then we'll switch over and see who is going to be on the pole. Great move, Very actually. Yeah, clin yeah, clinical. Absolutely clinical from, from Steve there. Beautiful. Just a cheeky amount of grass. Tiny little bit of grass to get the job done, but it was just enough and uh, he got that absolutely spot on. It was well judged. Very well judged. And uh, once again, for those that don't know what the heck you're looking at right now, so this is our spinny wheel. Um, we've got some 80s theme tune music as well. Uh, game show theme tune music, that is. Um, wheel of Fortune is what we call it. And... Um, yeah, we spin this after every race, apart from the final one tonight, just to determine who's going to be on the grid. As you can see, obviously, the numbers on there represent where they finished in the last race, apart from the minuses. So we'll take that's a full minus however many people there. So a full reverse grid is determined by the people that are one lap down or less. Anyone two laps down or more gets, um, I guess he's not allowed to, to partake in this little part. Can we don't spin? have anyone. We don't have anyone actually in that one that was oh, one do we lap not? down. It was three, oh, lap, okay. three laps down um, Anthony Mott and then Whoa. after that. Okay. Of course, I do take bribes on this. So, you know, if you, uh, if you want to send it over, by all means, send it. <laughs> I'll uh, drop my PayPal in the chat and uh, yeah, I can uh, do any reverse you want. I'll change the numbers for you as well. <laughs> well, look at that. It doesn't get any larger. It's 50. So who is going to be the person that's on that pole position? Well, it's your own Ursum. That's going to take pole alongside Crane Jones. And quite importantly, Brian Holmes is going to be third on the grid. So after that incident wow. earlier on, he, uh, I wouldn't say he caused. Obviously, he was, he was the sort of main catalyst in that, bouncing off the curb. But he's going to be third. Uh, Joe McDonald and Scott Malcolm will be behind him as well. Uh, Pete Newman will only be seventh, as we see someone go into the wall on the pit straight there in the background. But uh, yeah, Pete Newman's going to be seventh after his incident. So we won't be too upset with that. And uh, hopefully he'll be able to get through the field quite strongly and we'll see the uh, the quicker guys coming through as well from the back so join me and alex in about 10 15 minutes time on the i racing esports network and we'll bring you race two from the bsr mx5 autumn cup don't go away
Welcome back to the BSR MX5 Autumn Cup for what has turned into quite an interesting development actually. We're just currently watching uh, Stephen Hefford I believe. Oh, as Brian Holmes is off on the, uh, in the Lesmos. It seems like the section's been... Oh, there's an accident there. It's been set up at the wrong circuit this race. So they're just having a bit of fun on the oval currently as Van Gool I think is on his side there. We can see the Swift Cooper Esports cars going around. And that camera angle's giving me seasickness at this rate. Jamie Ayres is in the pits, but you can see the, the MX5 going for it. Kip Stevens has just put it in the wall and... Uh, well, they all are now. There's... Uh, <laughs> Nick McCarran and Dan Hunt having a bit of an issue so as it stands I believe we're going to get into the right session and then uh, come back so yeah these guys uh, as Josh has put, just put in the chat they're uh, putting a bit of use to that track it's not been used in a while and uh, I'm not sure that the MX-5 is probably the car we expected to see around there as there's um, Steve Hefford and Charlie Summers giving it everything they've got in the MX-5 Fantastic to see it actually being used though, to be fair. I mean, I've never actually been on it in the service. I've never even bothered taking anything around. And Hefford going for it. And the side indie car around it. here is epic. <laughs> I can imagine it was quite bumpy as well, actually. Yeah. And to be fair, Dylan, um, you ask why is it used? It's just it's just something nice to have, I suppose, isn't it? If it's not been used in years, it's just nice to be able to have a nostalgic track in iRacing. Of course, oh, as Hefford gets turned, oh. that's going to hurt. Oh, oh. I'm going to need... Uh, well, you would do. You'd probably need an helicopter for that, but you'd be all right. I just hope he wasn't. Oh, I think he would have been in VR as well, actually. Right. Well, they are going to put the other session up, aren't they? Yeah. So we're just going to nip back to uh, nip back to a break while we load into the session. So stick with us, guys. We'll be back in about five minutes time.
Welcome back to the iRacing Esports Network. Welcome back to Autodromo Nazionale Monza and the BSR MX5 Autumn Cup. I'm Chaz Draycott with Alex Simpson joining you for the second race of the four races we have tonight. Conditions not much different from the first race. Apologies for the little mix-up as well in the uh, second part there. We are now back and this will be the uh, the full-blown race. We're not going to be on the oval hopefully this time. I mean, some of them might do if they have a big enough incident, Alex. But uh, we saw a good race in the first one, so hopefully same again. Yeah, I hope so. Um, like you say, cracked in first race, really. Um, only a couple of little um, mishaps, but uh, this is where it always gets a little bit more spicy, doesn't it, in these reverse grids. Uh, and I think that's exactly what we're going to see in this one. You certainly are. You're in Ersam on pole position then from Craig Jones. Brian Holmes third on the grid for Youth Energy. That's going to be very important for him. He's got a lot of AM drivers between him and Craig Williams, who is the next pro driver down in 11th. So. You've got Joe McDonald, Scott Malcolm, Tyler Lugo Vickery, Mikey Key, Mikkel Garcia, Benjamin Mears, and Mick Barry between them. Carl Hardy is 12th on the grid. And we'll scroll through the rest of them because we're not going to be far off the start now, to be fair. And uh, no matter how quickly I can read a grid out, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it in time, even for that. So you can see Joe McDonald on pole position then. No, sorry, it's Euron Ersam. Joe McDonald's in the red McDonald's car. There's a car missing from the grid. But the lights are on. And they're away. That was a really quick getaway. One of the Swift Cooper Esports diving into the middle of the track in the background. And it's between Ursum Jones and Holmes for the lead. Holmes is going to get the slipstream. He's already ahead of Jones. You could see him swap round on the timing sheet at the left-hand side there. And there is Joe McDonald, who I mentioned before. The 2x2 two two going into turn one. Brian Holmes has got a great start, though, hasn't he, Alex? And uh, he's going to get this done into Kerber Grande, surely. Yeah, around the outside. And uh, carry that momentum. 
not too many shenanigans in the background it seems a couple of uh, maybe three wide going into there but it seems like people have just leveled it out and gone back to two wide you it's, can not see people. it's not a too bad one the curve ground it's this one here it's this chicane because they come at it at so much higher speed and yeah, um, not, yeah you, you can just see that <laughs> there was what I was just going to say, it was what we oh, saw really on two wheels then. I'm not quite sure who that was. In the, uh, it was quite a multi coloured livery, really. But um, someone was all over the place there, really on two wheels. But um, there was what we call the wave effect there, where there's a lot of guys breaking and then they sort of get going again when they realise they can give it more speed. Oh, someone's off in the background. I think that was Mikel Garcia off at Lesmo 2. Hopefully he doesn't come back into the pack. Doesn't seem like he has done. No, he's kept it out of the way. But McDonald's got a slowdown, it seems, and that's not going to be very good going down the street. We've seen a lot of accidents there caused by people serving slowdowns there. What we, oh, sort of doesn't really seem to be going away for him. He's still got to get on the brakes. Everyone's streaming through, and it's the worst place to get a slowdown, isn't it, on lap one, especially here. Oh, it's one of the Swift Cooper Esports cars has to avoid him. I think that was Luke Cooper there. Just got out of the way at the last moment, and they're going to be the uh, sort of guys from near the front of the grid. That, uh, sorry, not near the front of the grid, near the back of the grid, that uh, finished higher up in race one. As we see, Scott Malcolm, second place so far. Three places gained. He's chasing down Brian Holmes for the lead. But look how quickly they're closing behind him. <laughs> oh, look at oh, that. Oh, no. He's caught Jones. Jones is in the wall on the inside. Oh, Lugo Vickery gets a smack from Craig Williams as well there. He says, you're going to tap someone else. Check this out. And there he goes. Oh, a bit of shenanigans going on behind him there, just outside the top ten. They're surely going to go three wide there. Number 28 car is in the middle of that as well. That's Ashley Beard. Welcome to race number two of the BSR X5. <laughs> what did I say? I called it. This is what we're going to see. Maybe even four wide going here. Ashley Beard's pushing the rest of them in front of him. I think it was David Hampson in the 88 car that was uh, two wheels over the, uh, the kerbs before. He's catching a bit of grass on the inside. That's going to ruin his momentum. Jack Ashton and the number 375 of Carl Hardy are at the front of this battle. Hopefully they're not going to make contact into Kerber Grande or as Christian Rose called earlier, Kerber Grande with Brian Holmes. Three wide halfway round. Can't quite see them, but there's no one going flying off yet. That's a brilliant shot. I <laughs> really, really do like that camera as they come flying into the uh, chicane. And your own Ursum is best of the rest at the moment. It's Brian Davis oh. getting away. Oh, that was Josh Thompson giving it absolutely everything. <laughs> How that didn't go over, I don't know. That was really high up. He's got Hampton behind him there. Oh, a little oh, nerf from behind as well. Yeah. Craig Williams and Mick Barry, I think, there as well. Getting his elbows out is Craig Williams. Well, he's getting his elbows out into the gravel through the second Lesmo. He's going to get overtaken there by uh, Dan Hunt, who we saw obviously at the front in uh, race one. But this is, uh, well, <laughs> this is just great stuff. Action packed from the get go here. And this is, like Alex said, race two. And races three and four are going to be even more mental usually. They mix up the grid even further. As we see Mick Barry down the inside there, nice move on Scott Malcolm. Scott's dropped down to six now on this lap. That just shows you how quickly it can change on a track like this in the MX-5. And Dan Hunt gets a great run out of Ascari, and he's not going to really uh, need much slipstream to get that done. McIntyre's up to second already. He's gained 14 places in two laps, and he's, we've seen before that he's the master of gaining places, Alex. Well, that's just mad, isn't it? Crazy. That's really impressive. I mean, he's got five seconds to catch up Holmes. I'm not sure he's going to do that, to be honest. Even if he was just a little bit quicker, Brian's so quick as well in this car. So I think, um, yeah, he's probably going to have Ayres and um, uh, Jamie and your own all around him, just battling him for um, the rest of this race. It's going to be on for P2. Brian just needs to keep it clean. He certainly does. And at the end of the day, you're just going to, well, there's not, I mean, he's got five seconds nearly on Jamie Ayres, but even then, because of the run that Jamie might have if he's in a battle and trying to give everything against someone he is just you can see the gap on the left hand side there closing down maybe that's obviously helped by the fact they're going around Curva Grande it might be bunching up slightly but we see Jack Ashton now with Tyler Lugo Vickery and Craig Williams go through Curva Grande this is a battle for 9th, 10th and 11th position and we're seeing still a good mix of the AM drivers with the pros sometimes the uh, AM drivers and I'm sure they won't mind me saying they do drop like stones sometimes against these AM guys and it's nice to see that's not the case now. Scott Malcolm there. Oh, very close with the number 17 car. Jack Ashton, opportunistic. See you in a bit, boys. Down the inside Brilliant. he goes. Awesome stuff. Really well uh, identified. The target locked and he's away. Tyler Lugo Vickery getting past as well. Oh, on the outside there. That's the number 17 car. Just trying to see who that was, actually. He's not showing up on my screen for some reason. I've that or I've gone blind. It's Alan McCain in the uh, Bushwing livery just an absolute train isn't it your own person there with Jack Ashton and Dan Hunt 
those two are making their way forward really well. Jack Ashton up 12 places, Dan Hunt up 9. Jamie Ayres has actually got past Jack McIntyre for second place now, but those two will be trying to work together to catch up with Brian Holmes. They know just how quick Brian is, and that lead that he's got at the moment will be oh so important as your own Urson not taking the optimal line through Ascari there, but still gets it done. Oh, <laughs> big out of shape. That was McCain. <laughs> Really, really giving oh, it. Oh, there's something quick. big there. That was oh. Hefford into the wall, I think. Um, it was indeed Hefford. So what Malcolm. has gone on there? Malcolm's there as well in the automatic not kill cart. Let's have a look. It's Jason Cooper here. Oh, already had damage going into the corner. Oh, I think Hefford did it himself, you know. Yeah, oh, I think he did. Bounced back. And so that's a separate instance, I think. Yeah. Scott Malcolm was quite further up, wasn't he? I think Scott might have been involved in an accident with someone else. Either that or he's done the same thing just a bit earlier on. Yeah. Well, there you go. I Real just saw, saw the timing sheet lighting up as uh, people were changing positions. And uh, it turns out, K minor. As we see Momo, copyright, into uh, Curva Grande. Jack McIntyre and Jamie Ayres. Behind them, though, that battle is not letting up. That's Dan Hunt, Mick Barry, and Jack Ashton. Sorry, I, I thought it was your own nurse in them, but it's not. They've uh, they've left your own behind now, and they've uh, set their sights on getting past Mick Barry. As I said a moment ago, not a moment ago. Oh, whoa, Jamie oh, has both of them. Jack McIntyre. That's how you take that curve. I think Jack McIntyre's got to slow down. Or has he? Yeah. Just defending the inside. No, it looks like slow down. Yeah. yeah. See, all that, they're working together, pushing each other down down the straight. But you know, it's just all undone when you do that. I mean, they had got it down to 4.8, but now. Brian's 5.9 clear. I mean, just flying away with this. Yeah, he's doing a great job so far. Really, really good stuff. Well, Jamie Ayres now has Dan Hunt in the picture. Dan's been quick all along. He's going to be putting pressure on as best he can. Jack Ashton has got involved with Jack McIntyre. Mick Barry leading the am charge at the moment from Ersam and McCain. McCain doing a great job as well. Obviously, we've got him uh, very out of shape. Oh, look how close these two are together. McIntyre on the inside of Ashton. No love lost there. Wing mirror kissing into Ascari. You can see they are all taking sort of different lines down there, but it is such a commitment corner, Alex, isn't it? I mean, I'm sure you've probably been around it in uh, LMP1s, F1 cars and the like, but it, it is a real commitment corner, and once you get one part of it wrong, it can ruin your whole approach, can't it? Uh, it's all about that first part, really. You have to get the entry right there. If, you, um, if you're just a bit deep into it, it really, really compromises the whole section, and you're scrambling to try and make it. The car feels like it understeers, and you knocking off curbs and all sorts of stuff and uh, yeah so easy to lose it then and the weight transfer of course in this car as well it is quite soft in terms of if you absolutely nail it into a corner there is a bit of body roll as Dan Hunt does the fastest lap of the race but I imagine in a car like this if you just tap one of them curbs and overdo the sort of commitment to turn it in you, you could easily spin it and then spit it out the other way I suppose oh, oh it's a piece about spitting it out the other way sorry Hunt Nearly yeah. turning it around there, wasn't he, as he turned left? But he's down the inside now is Jack Ashton. Once again, opportunistic stuff all over the back of Jamie Ayres. He's on the grass, he's trying that hard to get past him at Kerr Grande. You see Brian Holmes flashing past. Look at him, all over the grass, and now this is going to bring Mick Barry into the equation. He's going to be hoping these pro guys take each other off. Dan Hunt mounts the curve. Oh, he's got it out of shape, and he's in the gravel. McIntyre's going to try and go through the middle of him, and he's going to do it as well. It's... Uh, a bit of a contrast to how he got around there the last lap, obviously with the slowdown. Now he's gaining positions through there. Mick Barry passed Dan Hunt, but he's gone in deep, and off he goes. He's on the uh, Adam McNally rally cross route there. Yeah. Brings it brings it back on. Keeps it all composed, though. Fair play. It wasn't a terrible read, to be honest. He's done, uh, done all right. And, yeah, he's still the lead AM car on track, and McCain has got past Urson behind them. And once again, we just see the snake sort of closing up together again, and, and battles just sort of blend into each other, don't they? all the time I think around here look at that you can just see it just apart from uh, from Brian who's you know through um, Ascari already in a way down towards Parabolica but look at that you've got from second all the way down to what 21st yeah on that map, mini map how close are they I mean not sure what happened to the gaggle that's at the back they've dropped miles off but uh, yeah that is just crazy I think that might have been battling with Craig Williams because Craig Williams is 23rd it's, it's to 22nd is Nathan Davis so he's the back of the first train that's going on and after that, it's Craig Williams, Jordan Giddings and Cesare Rizzo. So I think they've probably just been in a battle. I mean, as we've seen, it is easy to do where you can get in a scrap, you lose the slipstream, and that's pretty much it then. And uh, much as Brian Holmes has done, you can just say bye. Look at him. He's just absolutely gone, hasn't he? Brilliant stuff. Yeah, and, and you're right. That is exactly what happened, wasn't it? It was just all the battling and um, just continued to 
sort of exchange position. And if Ashton can get past McIntyre and up towards Ayres, it's just going to be made a little bit worse right now. Uh, Peter Van Gaal with the fastest lap of the race it, that last time by as well. He's up 11 spots. There he is. And, um, yeah, he's doing well right on the tail of, um, who is that? Nick McCarran at the moment. Uh, sorry, it's Nick on the tail of um, Alex Cherney, actually, literally pushing him down the street. I think Nick's trying to help Alex close this gap to uh, David Hampton in 11th place. Uh, some three-second margin now. Yeah, Dave's doing a good job so far. I think it's his first meeting anyway. And uh, he's showing that he's got the pace to mix it with these boys. He's certainly got the livery to do so anyway. He's right at the back of this train then with Thompson, Summers, Urson, McCain and Barry. And they're all, of course, trying to close in on the leaders. Josh Thompson, we saw as signed for... Well, they're all, they're all going rally crossing with Adam McNally at this point. Um, Thompson, we saw in the week, signed for uh, Crossmaster Mivano Racing. I'm sure he's very happy about that. They seem happy to have him, so we wish him all the best in his further ventures. I believe they actually won the... Oh, I apologise, I lost my uh, microphone. Is that there? They, uh, they won at um, the Circuit of the Americas, actually. Um, last Bel weekend, I believe. I believe they did, yep. Won the Neo and the uh, LMP1 class. Yours truly could only, oh, uh, only manage second. That was... McCain. McCain, yeah. Pushing Carla. Oh, uh, through in the rear end, I think. Oh, he wants to get out of the way of these lot coming through. Oh, just turned left on him there. I think the right rear is a bit damaged, so it's going to spin to the left. Keeping it out of the way, though. Youth energy battle going on there. That's McNally pushing his teammate Beard. And there's another youth energy car trying to push another car at the front. There's your own Ursum. And Hampton. Wait a look. look. I just don't know where to look at the minute. I'm literally clicking everywhere. There's battles no matter where you look. <laughs> a bit further down as well. Ash Beard having some sort of connection problems disappearing as well. Oh. Got this one going on as well. This between Carl Yepalette and Adam McNally. They've got um, Carl Hardy just behind them as well. I mean, and then, yeah. Everywhere I look on my timing screen, it's red. The red <laughs> is the indicator for me to click on it. I'm like, I could click in 20 places. We need about four monitors for this, don't we? <laughs> I suppose you've got them, but I haven't. <laughs> we just need so much. Honestly, this is this is the beauty of this series week in, week out, though. You do see constant battles everywhere, and it's it's so close. It's such a tight championship, and you do often see the uh, the same guys near the front week in, week out with uh, with race one, but the reverse grids just show this fantastic class of racing. And look at these guys. Jamie Ayres there, Jack Ashton, Jack McIntyre as well. All having a right good old ding-dong, but it, it's bringing Mick Barry into this as well, and... Mick wouldn't mind me saying he's not normally one to be mixing it with these guys in terms of outright pace, but that's the beautiful sort of playing field level with the slipstream. Oh, oh there's oh. contact McIntyre's around. I just had to say that, didn't I? I think McIntyre's caught someone else out there as well. Or has he? I think he might have hit. No, I think he's on. Uh, I think he's on his own though. Oh no, you're right, Josh. He was able to he's... continue, but he has lost yeah. a lot of momentum, hasn't he? So. And I think Jack McIntyre's lost a lot of uh, mo momentum in that one. That, was, uh, that doesn't even rival Adam Bath's puns. That, that was really poor. I apologise. Charlie Summers then up to fifth place. He's chasing down Jack Ashton, Jamie Ayres, Dan Hunt, and of course, race leader Brian Holmes at the moment. I've got him 5.9 seconds ahead of everyone. So he's maintaining that gap as well. It's not like it's coming down at all from these guys. But as we've been saying, more and more battling has meant that uh, he's just able to get away with it. It's a great scrap for second. But this battle for sort of fourth and back is just awesome stuff. Summers down the inside of Ashton see just how much that MX-5 dives on its nose in the brakes as oh Mick Barry taking a scenic route there bit of gravel doesn't spin it but Ashton's got the cutback that we saw Hefford do so well in race one as we go into the final lap for Brian Holmes he's probably halfway around it by now and uh, yeah Steve Hefford is out but with it being on the final lap he will of course still score points because he'll only be the one lap down could have been major if it was the lap before for the championship but uh, yeah it's not yeah, he's kept it going and at least got there. I think that that's, that's the main strategy, isn't it? You've got to try and be in with the shot with the reverse grid if he can be. As we see, Hairs sorry, Hairs down the inside of Hunt there into Kerber Grande. And now that means Dan's going to get a really good slip through. There goes Brian, flying away with it at the moment. Just great scraps everywhere we go. But I've just got to say as well for uh, Hampson, leading the Am charge at the moment, fifth overall. He's done a great job in this race. He's fighting it out with Charlie Summers, Jack Ashton and Mick Barry as well. Mick also doing a good job in the AM battle. They're now together on track as Summers has got ahead. Oh, Hampson's gone behind them. Slow I think down. he's got a slowdown. Oh, honestly, I've started to develop Cursed. the 
curse, haven't I? It really has uh, got strong tonight. Mick Barry to the head of the uh, the AM race so far, and to the head of the gravel trap as well. That the second Lesmo, Josh Thompson's going to get the run on him. Although he's actually kept his momentum quite well there. Normally that gravel washes your momentum away, but he's still with uh, Charlie Summers there side by side. Sounds like someone went off in the background there. Indeed. I think it's Adam McNally and Nathan Davis have gone down the order. Not sure what's happened to them, whether they made contact or whether they've done it themselves, but, well, this guy's not going down the order at all. He's going to be very happy with this one. Is Mr. Brian Holmes. He's just controlled it from the start, really, hasn't he, Alex? He's just done a really neat and tidy job of it. Got the jump, didn't he, off the, off the start, went around the outside of Curva Grande, and then from there, you know, smooth sailing, really. No mistakes that I can see. A um, couple of off-tracks, that's it, really. So good, solid, strong drive for Brian. Bounces back after uh, what was disappointment in race number one. It certainly was, and he's celebrating already. Brian Holmes takes your win in race two of four for the evening, and to the line, it's going to be Dan Hunt and Jamie Ayres. Oh, and it's Hunt that takes it. Somehow, he just gets to the line first, and then it's Ashton Hampson wins the AM category in that one still. Summers, Barry, Thompson, Van Gool, McCarran, Cherney, Ursum, Cooper, Cooper, Jacolette, Beryl Smith, Hardy, there's just, well, they're just streaming across the line. They're all still so close together overall. Like Alex was saying earlier, it's very rare that we actually saw a gap that was over one second in that first race, and it seemed like about halfway through, it was about the same in this one, and obviously a couple of incidents and little knocks here and there spread them out. As we see, one of the uh, that's Mears trying to get the Mikey oh. Keogh line doesn't quite get it. But you can just see, look at look at the outright pace that these guys have got. Here we go then. This is Jamie Ayres and Dan Hunt. Jamie's going to try and get that cut back, isn't he? Although he actually stayed on the outside, I think. Did he just get a really good slipstream? Yeah, he's down. The, yeah, Hunt sticks it to the inside. He knows that's the favoured line. Jamie gets the run. I think the timing line's a bit earlier than where the actual line is here. Yeah, that was close. Oh. That was seriously close. Like, he had the run as well, didn't he, as there. So, that is crazy. Well, oh, even we'll see what the official standings are when we get them up. Yeah, it says 0, 0.00 on our timing screen on here. On the iRacing timing, it goes to thousands, and it's three thousandths of a second. 5.060 behind the leader for Dan Hunt, and then 5.063. The what did we have last week? It was pretty close last week as well, wasn't it? It was. It was one thousandth of well, a second. Well, was one thousandth. There you go. Oh, it's not even close. <laughs> between uh, between McNally and Jason Cooper, that was. I actually looked back in the break just to quickly check it was them, and uh, yeah, it was an unbelievable finish that. But once again, though, slipstreaming circuits are providing the excitement in this series, and I welcome it. It's really, really good to watch. And it's really good to watch, especially if you're Brian Holmes as well. He'll be happy with that. Fantastic win. Five-second win. And there you can see the uh, the gaps to Dan Hunt and Jamie Ayres. Jack Ashton finishing fourth. David Hampson, once again, I have to say, great win for uh, the AM category there for him. Charlie Summers, sixth. Mick Barry in seventh. Josh Thompson, eighth. Peter Van Gogh in ninth. And Nick McCarran rounds out your top ten form. Momo. Alex Cherney is 11th with Jeroen Ersum, third in the AM category in 12th. Jason and Luke Cooper together there, 13th and 14th. Carl Jackal at 15th with Anwar Beryl Smith, 16th. Carl Hardy is 17th and Jack McIntyre makes it to 18th position despite the uh, little off that he had later on in the race. Another one with an off in the race was Alan McCain, 19th overall. Nathan Davis, 20th. Mikey Key is 21st. Benjamin Mears, 22nd. Craig Williams, 23rd. Adam McNally, 24th. Jordan Giddings in 25th place. Craig Jones, 26th. Cesare Rizzo, 27th with Ryan Walker in 28th. David Ayres is 29th with Max Wright 30th and Joe McDonald is the last car on the lead lap. Steve Hefford, very importantly there, is one lap down. So if we get a full reverse grid, uh, Alex, that's going to put him on pole. Kip Cooper, Ashley Beard, Jack, James McRitchie, sorry, Scott Malcolm. They uh, make up the top 36. And then the final few cars that we've got on here are Anthony Mott, Tyler Lugo, Vickery, uh, Mikel Garcia and Peter Knowles. But... Yeah, important for Steve Hefford that you mentioned it before that he had to uh, get it going, and yeah, he's the last car on the lead lap. Well, uh, sorry, one lap down, which means he's eligible for the uh, reverse grid wheel, of course. Yeah, and we just see how useful that is for Brian. Do you know what I mean? He was able to bounce back quite nicely. The other guys weren't able to really get there, so close to a good portion of those points back. And you know, even for myself, like last Thursday as well, you know, I um, was in a better reverse grid because obviously the penalty I had to take in the first race, and you know, I was able to win. Um, Race number two, and it makes a, it does make a huge difference. Can't kind of salvage your night, so you can still um, can still walk away from uh, an accident in the first one and still get a really really good good points result. Right, where are we? Let's get this wheel up. 
again, those of you who don't know, um, we obviously set the pole position for the next race by the spin of the wheel here. And, um, wherever it lands, we'll get the on the pole position for the next race. So we're going to jump straight into it and give it a bit of a spin. We'll see where we are. Cue the music. It's going to be small. Is it? Or is it going to be large? Oh, it's close. 15th for the minute. And it stays on 15. So close to minus four. <laughs> well, that means then that 15th is Carl Jacquelet on pole position with, well, I think if we're going to have a winning duo, Luke Cooper and Jason Cooper, second and third on the grid, they're going to have a right ball facing uh, facing off with each other in that one. Euron Ersten is going to be fourth and Alex Cherney, the two Coopers teammate as well, is going to be fifth. So I'm pretty sure we're going to be seeing a Swift Cooper Esports fight at the front for this, but they've got some Momo cars as well, not too far behind. So it's going to be a very, very interesting race three of four this evening. So if you join myself and Alex again in about 10, 15 minutes time on the iRacing Esports Network, we'll bring you all the action. Don't go away.
Welcome back to the third out of four races tonight from Monza. We're on the iRacing Esports Network for the BSR MX-5 Autumn Cup. We're a little close to the start of the race, so we're going to fly through the grid as quickly as we can. We've got Carl Jacolette, Luke Cooper, Jason Cooper, Euro Nurse, Alex Cherney, Nick McCarron, Peter Van Gogh, Josh Thompson, Mick Barry, Charlie Summers, David Hampson, Jack Ashton, Jamie Ayres, Dan Hunt, Brian Holmes, Anwar Smith, Carl Hardy, Jack McIntyre, Alan McKay, Nathan Davis, Mikey Key, Benjamin Mears, Craig Williams, Adam McNally, Jordan Giddings, Craig Jones, Cesare Rizzo, Ryan Walker, David Ayres, Max Wright, Joe McDonald, Stephen Hefford, Kip Cooper, James McRitchie, Scott Malcolm, Anthony Mott, Tyler Lugo Vickery, Mikhail Garcia and Peter Knowles and they're away. There we go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, Carl Jacolette, sorry, I've just said Peter Knowles at the back and he's not at the front. It's his teammate Carl Jacolette at the front then with Jason and Luke Cooper behind him. Not in that order though. They've got Cherney. Their teammate is now ahead of your own Ursa for the second race in a row. Starts towards the front. And it's going to be Luke Cooper and Jason Cooper that are going to try and get past Jacolette as soon as they can to try and break away here because some of the Momo cars are quite near the front of the grid. And it's uh, it's quite a jumbled order this time, Alex. Sometimes we see sort of groups of the pros and groups of the ams, but it really is spread out looking down the order for this one. Yeah, I think that's going to make it a little bit more spicy as well. Jacolette down the inside of Luke Cooper then. Luke's going to the outside. Oh, he's run oh, wide though. Far too deep. Oh, don't hit him on the way back over. I tell me he didn't get slowed down, but... Everyone scrambling through there. There's a couple of people checking up. I think somebody's around in the background. Just Rizzo right dropping places. I think maybe a few slowdowns. I think that's all it was, really. Yeah, getting lost a few places there as well. I just saw him down the order. Adam McNally's gained a few places. Oh, there's a couple of cars around. I think Alan McCain's had an issue. Ben Mears has gone down the order. There's a couple of cars jumping up and down on the uh, timing screen on my left here. The route, yeah, the few of them round out of Lesmo 1, you can see them on the, uh, on the mini map there. Side by side for the lead, it's Cooper and Jacolette. It's the further and further down they go. As they go through the uh, the timing checkpoint there, you can just see the purple sector just move all the way down and just drag, drag some green times with it, because they're all obviously going faster than each other with the slipstream. Van Gogh in third there, going really hard on the exit of uh, Ascari. Luke Cooper's going to get a tiny overlap. Van Gogh's got to go to the right of Jacolette there, it's the only place to go. He's a bit harsh with his turn to the right, though. He's going to lose speed. Oh, oh Jacolette nice. really squeezed in the middle. How Half a track. <laughs> Half a track and we're three wide. Oh, that gave me hives. That that was mental. Jack <laughs> Luke Cooper around the outside then. Carl Jacolette is going to be... He's checking his wing mirrors are still there probably after that one. But he's got a really good run out there now. We might even go three wide down the straight. Jason Cooper leading away. And it's Luke Cooper and Van Gogh side by side. Here comes Jacolette then. And then it's Cherney and Thompson as well, so... We're not short of feisty drivers in this one. Jason Cooper's just going backwards. Look at it. Well, Luke Cooper can't go left because Van Gogh's there. 
He's trying it though. He's trying to push him out to get the space. This is brilliant stuff. We're only one lap into this race and they're already going for it. Van Gaal's around the outside. It's three um, Cooper Swift, Swift Cooper eSports cars. Can't get my words out. This is brilliant. We've got Tyler Luger Vickery, unfortunately, in the chat. He's not very uh, not very happy with what's going on in that one. Real shame to see it, Tyler. We will uh, try and look back at some point, but when you see this gaggle at the front, then they see a gaggle behind as well. And once again, Alex, it's until 19th place we don't see a gap that's over a second between these boys. This is awesome stuff tonight. Yeah, I think that's going to... I think anything, that's probably going to close back up as well. Anthony Mott is about two seconds. Oh, Jack Ashton with problems. Oh, big one problems. Down. Yeah, it, heavy, heavy hit. That car's not coming back out anytime soon. That's for sure. I don't think he's going to ever get that. I think that's... Uh, your car is toast is what he's going to be hearing over the radio there in an Australian accent. Oh, Nathan Davis, showman as ever. He's putting the uh, the green car. He's not blending into grass this week. He's blending into the gravel there out of the second Lesmo. Carl Jacolette still leading the AM battle at the moment at sixth overall, but he's just surrounded by pro drivers, and these guys have sort of boiled their way to the top. Thompson down the inside of Cherney into Iscari. But it's Van Gogh leading the way from Cooper, Cooper and Thompson. Doing a great job so far, but that's uh, surely going to change before the end of the race. Look at Brian Holmes as well. Seven places gained. He's already eighth. Just going to have a quick look at the, uh, the big movers in the field, see what we've got. Just a nice little reminder at the top of your uh, screen there. Pro and Am. Blue for Pro, green for Am. You can see that on the timing tower on the left-hand side. Down the inside, Jason Cooper goes ahead of Van Gogh there. Anthony Mott's gained 14 places. James McRitchie, 14. Kip Stevens has gained 15. He's the biggest mover in the race so far. And even though he's gained 15 places, he's down in 18th. So, brilliant stuff. And it just shows you how strong this, uh, this field is all the way through. People can have great drives and still only be... Uh, in the sort of top 20. Jack Collette then. He's got this train of cars behind him. We'll go on board. And here's Brian Holmes. Not got much of an overspeed to be fair. So they're doing about, what, 120 mile an hour down here now, Alex? My conversion to that's probably really terrible, isn't it? But yeah, I'm terrible with the conversion. <laughs> to uh, MPH, but close to that, I think. Yeah, let's call it 125. And that's the flat round here as well. That's the interesting thing. But you can see the tiny adjustments Holmes is using. They're just trying to wash off as little speed as possible. But it is actually quite easy to oversteer the car as well. Look at the closing speed as well and brakes. They just oh, oh Luke Cooper's got wide. straight on. Yeah. They just close up so much on the brakes there. Oh, it's oh. out of shape from Holmes. That was sketchy. That's Jamie Ayres on his right. Don't hit each other again, boys. I don't want another thrust to chat going mental. <laughs> Jamie reminded me that uh, after race one, that things were all good between him and Brian after that incident. He says it just happens. And I suppose it does, us <laughs> in, uh, in all honesty. Down the inside of his teammate Van Gogh through the second Lesmo. Van Gogh was leading this race a lap ago, and he's down in sixth now. Yeah, and make it back to, to be seventh as well, although he has got the slipstream of his teammate now. So, yeah, Brian's trying to pin him in somewhat, isn't he? Because we can't have anywhere to really go, but just not quite got the run. And, uh, yeah, Van Gogh just slips out. Although Brian's back down the inside, he's going to give it a go. Oh, not quite. Oh, they really nearly made contact there. Van Gogh taking all sorts of uh, curb on the inside. He runs out wide. Brian's a bit out of shape, and they've got Dan Hunt behind them now and Charlie Summers. Those two will not take the opportunity to line down, and they're three wide. There's not really much of an overlap anymore for Holmes and uh, Van Gogh. Summers doesn't really have much option here, Alex. He's just got to sort of stick with it and go with him. Um, speaking of sticking with it and going with him, though, Thompson has caught up to Cooper at the front. Oh, a bit of contact between Summers and Hunt. Hunt's a bit wide. A bit wide. He's very wide now. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it just, just sort of washes him out, doesn't it, really? It's Brian Holmes, then, back to the front of this group. But once again, we're just... There's battles everywhere we look. That's what we want. Yeah, what, a tenth and a bit quicker for um, Thompson, that one. Brings him onto the tail, but of course he will get the run around the outside. It's not going to be flat out on Thursday night, that's for sure, the BSRTC. <laughs> so, trust me, I tried it. Unless I uh, whack some wing on it and make myself really slow, it's not going to happen. <laughs> I remember when uh, in one of the few BSR, but yeah, it's, it's certainly going to be scary getting all them lot around. These these MX-5s are a lot smaller than the Kia, so you can probably fit a few more around Curva Grande easily. But um, when it's front-wheel drive as well, that'll make it interesting. I remember in the very few BSR TC Pro Series I did uh, for Leo Bodner back in the day, I was racing Sebastian Job and Ray Fowler into that first chicane, and I managed to overtake Ray Fowler, and I still uh, believe that's probably one of the finest achievements to this day. I don't let him forget it when we speak. <laughs> but um, yeah, it, oh, it Ray was, was good fun actually. I was, you know, as from a commentator's point of view as well, it was good when Ray was in it, and he reminded us actually that he has raced in the um, 
in the World Championship on, on the roadside as well. So he's no slouch in whatever discipline he does. So I wonder why he's four times on the uh, on the oval side. But yeah, he's got it where it counts. He got some wins. Super uh, happy to uh, get that. And yeah, always come in for a chat. So good, yeah. a good, good champion is Ray. Oh, he is. He certainly is. He's uh, he's full of banter as well as Ray. And anyone that doesn't know his name, you, you probably should. If you're on iRacing, he's full time World NASCAR Peak Anti Freeze uh, champion now. He just doesn't let off at all, does he? He's just always there at the front. And speaking of the front, Jamie Ayres is trying to get there. Luke Cooper is trying to stop him. He's got his teammate Alex Cherney in fifth place behind him now, but Jamie just wants to get in with that fight of uh, Jason Cooper and Josh Thompson for the front. Down the inside he goes, and Luke, I'm sure, is going to try and get the cutback. Keeps it on the inside, and he's going to do just that. Seems like, oh, no, there isn't an overlap, and Jamie Ayres makes sure of it, but that's going to give him the slipstream. I think that, to be fair, it might have been a little bit, it might be a bit of a subconscious strategy, but when you're coming into a uh, section where you get a slipstream, if the car starts out right behind you, then they can't really make much of a run-up, can they? It's, it sort of negates the point of it if they're right behind you, because there's that, nowhere for it to go. Yeah, that is the key thing, isn't it? You kind of want the overspeed by having, you know, being sucked up to them, don't you, really? That's what you want, rather than just sort of come out and just have, like, a K's difference or something like that. It's just you're not going to go anything with it. I think we saw some really mature driving by Tyler Lugo Vickery last night actually in that respect because he was often on the back of John Roberts in the final race and he didn't get a massive overspeed from coming from far back but he just he just stayed behind him and just made the most of it as Jason Cooper his lines optimized uh, sorry compromised there by Thompson and he has a fight with theirs and look at the gap that Thompson gets just out of that chicane it's going to be the five second just behind that Nathan Davis I'm pretty sure just went three wide in the background that's going to get tasty He's in there with McIntyre. He's down the inside of both of them. Brilliant. He's got past McIntyre and Van Gaul. Craig Williams wants a piece of that as well. That's number 51, Dan Hunt, sampling the Adam McNally rallycross route through the Lesmos. And they're all doing it now. They're all on the exit yeah. on the gravel. Bit of dirt on your tyres never hurt anyone. But it's certainly going to hurt your straight line speed if it washes the momentum away. Brian Holmes is still in the fight as well. He's eighth overall. But so many places change, Alex, all the time. It, it never stays consistent from one lap to the next. But this is why we love this stuff, isn't it? Yeah, exactly that. There is uh, anyone's wondering. There is an instant limit in the series as well. You can get disqualified from the uh, race if you exceed your instant limit. So, um, I'm trying to remember how much it's uh, set to, Chaz. Is it 12 or 15, something like that? I th uh, yeah, I don't think it's much. I think it is 15. I think the, uh, the Pro Series is 12. Is it? No, no, we're 15 as well, but we're a longer oh. race, aren't we? Yeah. Ah, yeah, that's very true. And it's a much bigger car as well. It's the right struggle bus sometimes. Is that Kia? <laughs> it. Um, it certainly is fun to rag it around though with it being front wheel drive it is a hell of a challenge but so is this MX-5 to be fair it's not the easiest thing to drive and really when uh, when you do join iRacing it's the first car you tend to drive and it sort of sets you up in terms of car control it gets you used to the physics very easily as well which is nice it's a very polished car and I've heard from a lot of people it seems very realistic to drive so they've done a smashing job with it and it just shows in how good the racing is that it provides look at these boys pushing each other down the straight though Cooper with Thompson absolutely glued to the back of him and your own person has just uh, confirmed it is 20 incident points in this so a little bit more forgiving well, not to say that it uh, hampers the racing in any way I mean these guys are really stuck together Jamie Ayres getting involved in this one now with Josh Thompson and Jason Cooper Jamie's trying to just open a gap there in the middle it's not going to work for him he wants to get on the brakes early Thompson down the inside Jason Cooper settles for second in this case Try not to get too much curb. He's got a nice run out of there, actually. It seems like he got a better run than Jamie anyway. Oh, in the background there, Craig Williams, all sorts of oh. two wheels. Davis really pushing. Oh, oh, who? I don't know who that was. Errol Smith, Anwar Smith. I think Anwar did that himself, you know. I think he hopped the curb and it sort of slid out to the right. And when he's, when he's corrected it. Oh, yeah, he's, yeah he just as he gets on the grass, he just tries to stop it. And it just, oh, that one bit of wall as well, really unfortunate. I think if he would have been about a few metres later, he might have saved that. Well, that wall uh, well, put a stop to the car and put a stop to his evening, I think. There he is in the pits. Real shame, that. Back to the front, then. Oh, they're all bumping into each other. The resulting damage, of course. Might affect them in a straight line. I'm not really sure what th what it's like, sort of in terms of uh, how fragile the aerodynamics are on the MX-5. It's obviously not the most aero-dependent car, but high racing does go into the detail where it does uh, mean that cosmetic damages, or what they seem to be cosmetic damages, do affect your straight line speed. And that's not what you want round Monza, really. It's the uh, probably the, the last thing you want. Oh, Ayers is really close to the back of uh, Cooper there. They're just all trying to hug that inside line. Steve Hefford showed us just how it was done in race one. And 
I think when they're in their battle, they just want to make that line, that run to the line, sorry, the most short run they can do. Yeah, it's what it needs to be. I think Thompson's shown here you can hold on to it. Just as they went across the line, and then uh, Cooper passed, and now Ayers having a little look. They are going to go three wide. Thompson tucks back in, and the other Swift Cooper car comes onto the scene, decides to go to the outside. He could have easily gone to the inside. Yeah. Made it quite tasty, <laughs> but wants to follow his teammate around. Really good stuff by Jamie Ayers there. Just neatly done. It was, there was no sort of no need for any flamboyance or anything ridiculous to be done. He just got it just, well, it was just very, very composed, wasn't it? Just got it, got it done as he needed to. I'm starting to repeat myself a little bit there. <laughs> Down the inside goes Thompson once again into that chicane. Ayers mounts the curb a little bit. Maybe a bit of contact. Look at Cooper. Don't make it three wide oh, into the last minute. Oh, it, in the background, McIntyre Davis again all over the place. Got a right scrap going on here. McIntyre, Holmes, Davis, Summers, Williams, Van Gool just off the back of this as well. Brian Holmes and Jack McIntyre really going for it. Two really good lads as well, these guys. So they're both feisty. Oh, a bit of contact there. And if you want one person to be chucked into a battle in this MX-5 that you want to spice it up, chuck Nathan Davis in. He'll go for any gap that's there. He'll really, really try and chuck this thing around. Summers is getting involved in the slipstream now as well. Craig Williams is there. I know Craig's streaming it tonight as well on his Twitch channel. Always entertaining to see. He's got quite a flamboyant driving style with Craig. Actually, he's, uh, he's good fun to watch. As all homes turns across, Summers there. Don't know how they didn't make contact, but that's uh, really respectful stuff. Davis down the inside of Ascari. McIntyre has to get on the brakes. Holmes is out of shape. He's on the grass. And he's still done it. How's he done still, that? I was going to say, he's still got past. A couple Charlie of us rejoined from uh, from the right as well. So. That was Great. awesome stuff. Making the most of it, even when it's out of shape. I think they just had to get on the brakes, did Davis and uh, McIntyre there, just to keep the car straight and not make contact with each other. But it's not worked out for Davis. He's at the back of this now. But Brian Holmes really showing good uh, car control there. He's not quite at the front of the battle, obviously. But Charlie Summers is the big winner in that one. Van Gaal's still stuck in there as well with McIntyre and Williams. And here's the battle for the front. Luke Cooper is going to be the main beneficiary of this if he can get rid of that overlap on Josh Thompson. I wouldn't turn out to the right. Well, I would now, but there you go. Jason Cooper's done just that. Dan Hunt in the background as well, having a go at Alex Cherney. Jamie Ayers is just going to get hung out to dry here. Thompson's got nowhere to go, really. That's two by two by two. There we go. There's the commitment. Yeah, all Josh can do is push, isn't it, really? Just to try and make sure he doesn't get held up too much. Oh, and um, yeah. <laughs> One of the Cooper cars, I'm not sure which one it is. <laughs> it was Journey on the outside as well. Thompson's made that inside line into that chicane work. Every single lap he's been round there. And Nim and Ayers get a great run out of there. And it's actually left the uh, the Cooper cars behind. But there's two main sort of slipstreaming areas left to go in this lap then. We are on the final lap of the race, of course. Dan Hunt a bit wide there out of Lesmo 1. Who's your money on Alex? Who do you reckon is going to make the most of the slipstreams now? Oh, I think Cooper actually stands... A real good chance here. I just feel like if he can get a good run out of Ascari, he might get both of them because they'll be side by side, I'm sure, coming out of that. I don't know if Thompson will wait. Let's try and go for this move. Is he going to go to the outside? Does. This is, uh, not really. He kind of stays behind. That's sensible. He gets a little nerf from behind, and that's ruined Cooper's line, so I'll take it back. I'll retract. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said Cooper. It could have been either of them, to be fair. You <laughs> might see Luke Cooper come back and get this one now. They're all running wide out of Ascari. Jamie Ez has got a little bit of a gap on Thompson, but he's going to go defensive now. This is the thing you've got to think about in your head. Who's going to get the cutback? Because if you're going to be on the outside, it may not be the favoured line to go down the inside. Um, sorry, around the outside into the corner. You've got to think about it coming out. Thompson goes oh, across. Let's oh, drive it in deep. Oh, there's nearly contact with uh, with Cooper there as well. I don't think Thompson's going to get the run to the line. It's going to be Jamie Ez that's going to take the win. I don't want to speak too soon, but yep, Jamie Ayres then wins your third race of the evening. Fantastic drive ahead of Josh Thompson, Jason Cooper, Luke Cooper, Alex Cherney, Dan Hunt. Fantastic driving by those boys. And here's Nathan Davis and Peter Van Gool across the line. Davis just gets there. McIntyre behind them as well. Jack Alette wins the AM battle just ahead of Jerome Ersum. Hampson 16th. That means Jerome Ersum typed that into the YouTube chat while he was still racing as well. So... Thanks very much for that, Jerome. That's real commitment to the uh, to helping us out here at Apex and obviously on the iRacing Esports Network. Everyone uh, getting information from Jerome while he's driving. So, yeah, massive thanks for that. But there's your race winner then, Jamie Ayres. Nice controlled drive. Did what he needed to do. As I said about three times in one lap earlier. Awesome stuff.
And he's going to try and drift it around again, as we've seen his teammate Jack McIntyre do a couple of times, though so famously, at Donington Park as well. You've got to give it a go into the Lesmo, haven't you? He's going to flick it to the left. There he goes. Oh, not quite. I think it's just a bit quick to get it sideways around there. He's giving it everything he's got, though. One more time. Yeah, go on, Jamie. Go on, son. No. He wants to clip that curb and unsettle it a bit, doesn't he? I think that maybe the uh, Ascari might be a place to do it. I've an, I've an half our effort, but uh, only uh, <laughs> a two for execution, I'm afraid, Jamie. Oh, he's pulled it over as well. Yeah, no more. Uh, it's like, no, can't do it. <laughs> he's less Another than true team, mate. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Yeah, if you've not seen Jack McIntyre drift it around Donington, you really do need to uh, go back and see that. We were, Me and Alex were absolutely stunned by the car control we saw there. It was unbelievable to watch. Absolutely unbelievable. Well, another great race there, Alex. Really enjoyed that one. Fantastic stuff to see this slipstreaming coming in such good effect. I know we talk about it all the time in the MX-5, but there's no wonder when we see racing like that. As just see that. Oh, sorry, go on, mate. <laughs> so, no, sorry. Yeah, I was just going to say, I just, again, tonight, the combination of everything, the reverse grid, the multi-classes, and the, you know, the track and the car, it just made for great racing. We've had another, another storming one, you know. Fourth race will be... Um, to another level, I think, you know? Yeah, definitely. Always is. Jamie Ayres, then, wins race three of the night from Josh Thompson, Jason Cooper, Luke Cooper, and Alex Cheney. I said that the Swift Cooper eSports cars would be up there, and they certainly were. Dan Hunt finishes sixth with Brian Holmes, seventh. Another good result for him tonight. Adam McNally in eighth with Craig Williams, ninth. Kip Cooper rounds out the top ten. Then you've got the Green Machine, Nathan Davis, with Pete Van Gogh, Jack McIntyre, Carl Jackalette, Euron Ursum, and David Hampson. Another great result for David in the AM category there. They're the first three in that one. Ryan Walker, 17th overall, with Nick McCarran in 18th place. You've then got Max Wright, and then a big series of AM drivers. Joe McDonald, Scott Malcolm, David Ayres, and Craig Jones there for result clothing, 22nd and 23rd. Benjamin Mears, 24th, with Ellen McCain in 25th, and Carl Hardy, 26th. Anthony Mott is 27th, Charlie Summers is 28th. Steve Hefford, 29th, and Anwar Smith, after his incident, is the last car that is one lap down, and the last car eligible for the reverse grid. Uh, that means then that James McRitchie, Mick Barry, Jack Ashton, Mikey Key, Peter Knowles, Mikel Garcia, Jordan Giddings, Cesare Rizzo, and Tyler Lugo Vickery all miss out on being able to get the reverse grid. So for the final time tonight, Alex, it's time to uh, get that wheel spinning. Let's bring it up on screen. That One more spin. Here we go. Straight in. Rowan has actually asked for your uh, PayPal link so he can uh, get the wheel to 15 or 20. Oh, well, uh, been, uh, he's been getting it free of charge so far, so <laughs> I don't think he needs to worry. And, um, well, what can you say? The race ended up 15th. Well, there you go, then. You couldn't have asked for that better. You couldn't have written that, to be fair. That means that your own Ersum takes pole position. Carl Jackalette gets another chance as well at the uh, reverse grid, and... The master of making up places in this series, Jack McIntyre, is going to be third on the grid with his teammate Peter Van Gogh fourth, Nathan Davis fifth as well. And there's a whole host of feisty drivers behind them, Craig Williams, Brian Holmes and Dan Hunt. So it's going to be fantastic to watch in the final race of the evening. Alex and I will join you again in 10, 15 minutes time on the iRacing Esports Network with the uh, BSR MX-5 Autumn Cup. Don't go away. <laughs> Your room was like, hey, thanks. Who's JJ Rich T? Who could that be? No. Oh. <laughs> James McRitchie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what a username. I love that.
Welcome back to the iRacing Esports Network and the BSR MX5 Autumn Cup from Monza. I'm Chaz Draycott with Alex Simpson here for the fourth of four races tonight. 
We've seen some brilliant racing all evening. A lot of slip streaming, of course, as you always get from Monza. And Alex, just a quick word before this final race gets underway. Yeah, we've seen some great action so far. And as you were saying before, the fourth one should be a little bit spicier with uh, another reverse grid with your own on pole. Always the way. Yeah, I think, um, well, just sorry, flashed up on screen there just for a second as the uh, overlay system takes it off. But yeah. This is going to be hectic, and you're right. Your own has lucked into some great starts here today um, from the pole positions. And let's see what he can do again. Better start this time. Doesn't get immediately jumped, although Yakala seems to have that drive. And here comes Jack McIntyre now through the middle. Yeah, Jack's going to want to get the jump as quickly as he can. He's got his teammate Bangul in there as well. Nathan Davis trying to do it. The top five have made a bit of a breakaway, though, from Luke Cooper and the others behind. Jack McIntyre's got to be the favourite for this one. He's done brilliantly all season long. He's been doing brilliant all year long, to be fair, let's face it. Rune Ersen down to fifth already off that. I didn't get the greatest of starts, but when you are at the front, it's not always the year the way you finish the first lap. They're all quite two by two so far. Well behaved, at least. I'll say that. We're getting into the chicane, which uh, isn't always the way. Didn't know whether I could hear a bit of contact. Or, oh, wow. Adam and Ali really on two wheels around that chicane there. Does a nice job of bringing it back down to earth. Oh, there's a bit of bumping and barging. Jamie Ayres is in there. There's a car around at the back. Mikel Garcia has gone down the order. Jordan Giddings also has gone down the order. That's the second time in two races that he's gone down in that uh, first chicane on the first lap. As they go through the second Lesmer, then Nathan Davis blending in with the grass once again with Jack McIntyre leading the way from Carl Jacquelet. Jack's going to want to run away with this as quickly as he can and try and do uh, what's going to be known tonight as a Brian Holmes. He, he wants Nathan Davis and Jackalette to fight, but Nathan's really, really quick, and I don't think Carl's going to hold him back for long. No, I think you're right there. I don't think we're... Uh, McIntyre's going to get so lucky. And indeed, round the outside goes Davis. That was great. Now, Jackalette under pressure from Peter Van Gogh, who um, is also very, very quick, so he'll want to go with his teammate at the front as well. Who we've got there, Kip uh, Stevens as well, tucked up behind uh, Carl now. And... Um, yeah, McNally's there too. So, got some quick guys right at the front here. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's sort of settled to the top already. Jackalette's going to just be defending his uh, his AM category victory at the moment as it stands. Anyway, Jeroen Ersen goes up a place to eighth overall. He's in a fight with Brian Holmes and Dan Hunt as it stands. But look at this gaggle now. We've got the front two trying to start to break away. Jackalette leads the rest of the field. Almost in a big arrow formation there as they filter into one big line down the straight. Then Bangula ahead of Stevens. He's got McNally and Williams behind him, then your own Ersum, of course. And these positions are just going to be changing all the time. Look at these lot going into the Curva Grande. Jackalette's going to be watching his mirrors, but I don't want to be doing that too much going into Curva Grande. You can see how much Davis has closed on McIntyre as well for the lead. Really well behaved stuff, to be fair, all night round Curva Grande. Of course, there was the issue with uh, Brian Holmes and Jamie Ayres in race one, but that was just a simple mistake. As, oh, Stevens looks to the inside of Jackalette into the chicane. That's brave. Really brave. Bit of gets, bumping and barging. That's what I say, he gets a shot from behind just to uh, try and encourage him some more. Yeah. Trying to say, go on, go for it then. If you're going to look at it, go. Oh, Hampton, he's had a good meeting so far, but there he is to the right. Had to uh, come undone at some point. And uh, yeah, he's going to get it going, but uh, he's missing the bonnet on the front of that. Oh, and uh, I think a lot more. Bit of suspension yeah. gone somewhere as well. <laughs> yeah, that front right is uh, not quite the front right anymore. It's not right, let's say. Still McIntyre in the lead, though. We saw Hefford actually going past the camera as well quite far down the order. It's a real shame for Steve Hefford there. He obviously won race one with a really nice cutback manoeuvre on the final lap. It doesn't seem to be going his way towards the end of the evening. He's got quite a bit of damage. Yeah, he's got some damage there. Of course, he did start at the back, didn't he? Because he was um, involved in something in, the, in, in race three. So, yeah. Um, let's see what he can do from there. Yeah, I'm sure he'll gain at least a good few places. He is always quick and he does make them up quite easily. He makes it look a bit effortless sometimes, but Dan Hunt he's going to be uh, managing the challenge for the win. As yep, as you say, Hunt going past Ersum then. He's going to get Jamie Ayres going with him as well. Naturally, these pro guys just get to the front of the field. Jerome doing a good job though tonight so far. He didn't really sink too much in uh, in race three, I don't think. But look at this. It's just it's splitting up a little bit ahead of Dan Hunt there. You've got some of the youth energy cars. That's uh, Holmes and McNally. As you could hear someone on the gravel, all the grass there going a little bit wide through parabolic, I'd say the least. But it's, it's really not spacing out that much, to be fair. Three wide here between Williams, Holmes and McNally, and they're closing up on Kip Stevens on the left. And Holmes is sort of squeezing his own teammates to the grass there. As you see in the background, Jamie Ayres is trying to go around Dan Hunt. 
two by two battle there. Craig Williams on the inside, McNally on the outside. I'm sure it's a right barrel of last from where they're sat as well. This is uh, looks like a lot of fun to be doing in the MX-5. This is not really a car track combo you'd think that would. Uh, well, it's not the first thing to come to mind, but it's worked very well once again this evening. Peter Van Gogh third. Oh, Nathan Davis still doing that blending in. Oh, a bit of contact between uh, Holmes and Jackalette there. I don't think Jackalette got a very good run out of the uh, chicane. McIntyre chasing Davis down around the Lesmos. They're not going uh, rally crossing with Adam McNally into Lesmo two. It can be quite a difficult corner to get right as Nathan Davis displays there the, uh, the second Lesmo because <laughs> you want to get on the brakes at the right time and try and turn it in. But if you do sort of stamp on the brakes a bit too much while you are turning, it can either over rotate because the corner dips down and there's a real sort of strong camber on the inside with a hefty curb or you can sort of not do it enough and run wide it's it's a very very tricky corner to master that one i have to say i think i recently fairly generous on the um off tracks that you get as well because you can really really run it out wide oh um, yeah not as wide as what nathan was doing of course that did pick up an off track <laughs> but yeah you can get away with it to some degree and you've got to be careful as well, obviously, because there's quite a long run down to Ascari as well there, which is another overtaking point. So it implies a lot in terms of your lap round there, because if you get hindered going into Ascari, you've then got to think about the run down to the Parabolica where they are now. And it all does... It is a very, it's quite a momentum track, actually, as we saw with uh, with last night when we were saying that, actually. It's, it's sort of all links into one another. Because of these long straights, you've really got to keep your speed up on the exits, and it's so, so important. And that second oh. Lesmo is a pivotal part of it. Hugely, absolutely hugely important that you come out of there, like you say, because you're just on full power for so long. You're just bleeding time if you get a poor exit off that all the way up to the next corner. So, so important. Davis is uh, he's not bleeding anything right now. He's getting past Jack McIntyre. On the inside, Peter Van Gogh is still in third. Kip Stevens is fourth. Jack Alette, then Holmes, Williams, McNally, Hunt and Ayres. It's a really strong top ten. And even when you go back from that, you've got Thompson, Cooper, Cherney, Cooper, Summers, McCarran, Wright. It's just, there's, there's talent everywhere you look in this field and it still amazes me to this day. I mean, it's a really feisty series and I still really enjoy uh, commenting on it and I'm sure that everyone enjoys watching it at home as well. One person that's not really enjoying himself at the moment though, unfortunately, is Tyler Luger Vickery again, once again. Oh. Caught up in an incident. It's a real shame because honestly, if, if Tyler, Tyler didn't have bad luck, he wouldn't have any luck at all. Honestly, he, he got a win in last night's race, really controlled drive with John Roberts, fantastic battle, but... Honestly, it just doesn't, doesn't come together for him. We have a quick look now. Going down the straight. Oh, just oh, just a little bit of a squeeze. It's just tried to tried to avoid an incident there. I think that was the. Uh, I think it might have been Jordan Giddings. He was just avoiding the uh, the slower car and well, unfortunately just caught up out of them. I'm afraid. Not the easiest thing to see. Yeah, he just just comes out of the way just to avoid the. Uh, that was McCain. I just don't think he realised how close he was there and turns him around. Hopefully Tyler will be back on the horse to uh, continue next week. It is, it is very difficult to accept at the end of the night when you have been caught up in incidents. and it, it does annoy you because you obviously don't get that chance to do it again. It's not something like like with Forza, they introduced the uh, the rewind system where if you get it wrong, you can just go back a few seconds and do it. It's not like that in this. They, they do simulate it to be as realistic as they can be. And of course, it, ju it just sort of annoys you a little bit, doesn't it, when your night's over at that point and it's out of your control, really. Oh, it more than annoys you. Let's let's get real here. I'm sure Tyler's <laughs> in there r right now, and uh, yeah, emotions are running uh, running right through him. That's for sure. So where's the uh, where's the Star Wars memes of the Emperor? Let the heat flow, because I'm sure <laughs> he really went for it down that oh. microphone. As uh, we've seen another great battle. Well, they were nearly four wide there. Kip Stevens got out of the way of it. Nathan Davis really showing him what he's made of getting really strong in that battle nearly nudging the side of Peter Van Gogh but Peter's done a great job of coming through to the front here it's two by two. Oh, someone's off in the gravel someone's really off in the gravel there was, there was a car travelling at a lot of speed through some dirt there you should only really wow. see that in the, uh, the Paris Dakar yeah and, Carl Yakala yeah. I don't know quite what's going on for him let's see if I can quickly find where he went off oh there were three wide he was on the outside we know what's going to go on here uh, it's just going to be the tiniest yeah. little nerf, but... Uh... Oh, no, yeah. it's just a domino effect. Oh, oh, oh God. <laughs> Double team. That's oh. a big hit. Oh, and a nice few rollovers for the... Uh... Oh, you're going to do it? Do it in style, I say. Oh, wow. Definitely, yeah. But I just wanted to I just wanted to get back to the one point about the, the Tyler and, uh, you know, how 
you know, we all get very angry and stuff like that when this happens. But, you know, I'd rather it be like that, you know, because then, you know, there's the passion there. You know, we all try and do well. And, you know, if it was just like, oh, well, you know, yeah. the yeah, fact that it get, can get under our skins. Well, for me anyway, like, I, you know, I'm the worst person. I really should live stream because you lot would just be lowing at me all the time. I'll be <laughs> this in and that in. And, you know, I've done it a few times. My poor old man, he gets some right stick because he always spots for me. He loves to spot. But, yeah. I'm sure he wears ear protectors, they're not headphones. They just you can hear me from um, from in the garage. It's it's you're certainly right with that as well. I mean, I I won't have any sort of embarrassment in saying that there's there's been series where I was uh, on pole position for World GT Championship and I've never scored a win in that series. I've never even considered myself to be that quick in that championship. Put the Audi on pole with a reverse grid, mind you, at uh, Sebring. Went into Turn 1 thinking we can probably get a win out of this. We were working with some of the cars behind us. Put it in Turn 1 and spun it and put it in the wall. And I cried. I genuinely, yeah. genuinely cried. I threw my headset at a wall. I was absolutely fuming. Um, something that is going to be fuming, if this doesn't go right, is Nathan Davis down the inside of the Curva Grande there as we get away from my sob stories. Look at the run that Dan Hunt's got. He's going to be loving this. Two laps to go. And he's right in the fight for the win here now. Send That's it. how quickly it can change. Yeah, definitely. Go on, son. <laughs> down the inside. I'm sure that wouldn't go down well after how clean these guys are battle. <laughs> Davies trying to blend in with that green Astro turf now instead. Now he's on the gravel. Dan Hunt coming through. Opportunistic as ever. In the middle. Straight into second. Lovely stuff. Beautiful. Beautifully done. Really, really neat driving there by Dan Hunt. Shows his uh, his maturity and his experience within uh, racing with these guys. Oh, Nathan, a bit of a bouncy rejoin as he comes on. Slams it on the anchors and through the second Lesmo he goes. Really, really good stuff by these guys. Oh, I thought Cherney might have got uh, disqualified then, but just his connection. But again, Alex, we see a really big battle for the front of the field. And it's, it's just going to get hotter and hotter as we get two laps to go. Yeah, everyone's coming together. McIntyre on that, I think. They're going to be right under the cosh. Can the likes of Holmes get past Davis and maybe put a little challenge in as well? He's obviously won one tonight. It'd be nice to get two. Be up for that. Youth Energy would gladly take the points a lot of Momo cars around but actually I think uh, not as dominant as they, uh, they have been so a chance for Youth Energy to really uh, close up, have a good showing for um, Swift Cooper actually they've been very good all day, they've been featuring in every race yeah they've, they've done a smashing job tonight, they've, they've been my standout team really, I mean Youth Energy and Momo we always see them doing well up the front but the Swift Cooper guys have been fantastic, I mean Dan Hunt and Nathan Davis, who we see here, they've been some of the only guys to really take the fight to them that much. But look at the speed Dan Hunt's got on uh, Jack McIntyre. There's nothing Jack can do. And Nathan's going to try and go with him as well. And I think Nathan might look at the overspeed he's got. He's got a real difference in speed, though. I think he might have this going into Curva Grande. He's going to go out to the left, of course. Dan Hunt now completely ahead of McIntyre. They're not even three wide, but McIntyre's just going to push him. So go on, keep that green car at bay, mate. Go on. Round they go. Fantastic commitment by these drivers all night as well to chuck the car in so hard around there. I know I certainly wouldn't uh, want to chuck it around there at that speed. Dan Hunt goes to the inside. He defends from Davis. He knows what he wants to do. Does the right thing. And that line has just worked for everyone in there tonight. Josh Thompson made a really good run of it in the uh, in the second and third races. I believe it's the second and third one. Honestly, these races go by that quickly over a course of an evening and they're that exciting. You can often get them mixed up in your head. Out of Lesmo 1 they go, filtering their way around. That battle behind them that's led by Craig Williams is surely going to be a part of this very soon. They just make their way down to Ascari one more time. There's just a bit too much of a gap back to Charlie Summers, I think, there, Alex, for that to uh, join on as we go into the final oh, I lap. think so, yeah. Looks up like 1.1 seconds, actually. It's, uh, it's built up a little bit over this lap. Into Ascari once more, then. A bit squirrely on the brakes for some of these guys, but... They really are pushing hard. A bit of a bounce over the curb for McIntyre. Oh! Nathan Davis. <laughs> he's always great to watch. And he's just, he's, well, he's not making any differences to that tonight. He's just uh, keeping it on the edge as always. But sometimes loose is fast. So it's, uh, that's probably the philosophy he's going for in this one. He decides which way does he want to go. Dan Hunt filters him behind McIntyre. Into the final corner they go. One more lap then for Jack McIntyre and Dan Hunt. And, well, you've got to consider everyone else that's within about three seconds of them behind, I suppose, the slipstream's that strong. You just see the left-hand corner of Nathan Davis's car there on the right of Brian Holmes, and he pushes Brian out from that slipstream, and that's going to really hurt him down the straight. He's going to hope that uh, McIntyre and Hunt come over to the left a bit, and, well, that's exactly the opposite thing to what they're doing right now. 
it's probably enough he's probably getting enough that he'll stay alongside Nathan here and Nathan will get somewhat boxed in although pulls out now does Hunt Nathan oh he breaks a bit earlier than the rest he thought about three wide didn't he right into the corner but pulls out of it no Brian <laughs> <laughs> Brian's going around the outside he's braver than I am he's on the grass a bit this could be for the race win if he can make this happen. No. no. Got just, yeah, you've got to be careful, haven't you? Dan Hunt down the inside, then a McIntyre. Brilliant. Dan Hunt goes to the front then. McIntyre in second. Holmes third. Van Gogh still in fourth now, actually. Sorry, I say still in fourth. He's got to fourth. Had a Nathan Davis. And it's just a really, really big, strong train of uh, pro drivers. Dan Hunt out on the outside there now on the gravel into the second Lesmo, great shots from on board Brian here, this looks brilliant, you can just see how much these guys are trying, look at Jack McIntyre, he's shown us car control and keeping that thing sideways and that's a uh, that's an example of how to apply it in a racing situation and not a drifting situation, that was wild, wild exit of Lesmo too, but obviously it's not helped into Ascari, but with these guys battling now, this is going to give more of a gap to Dan Hunt surely, because he gets the optimum line in there, Brian takes a lot of curve, oh. he's up to second, beautifully done. That's really good for beautiful. Brian because he cleared him, he's going to get a heck of a run here. Half a second, how much time can he gain going into Parabolica? Might just be enough to get the run, <laughs> Hunt weaving, he's desperate to break that draft and it is helping to some degree because he's only caught a tenth and a half at this point. And in the end, Holmes is like, no, I'll just stick here, I'm going to have to do it on the brakes and coming out of the Parabolica, it gets a great, great entry in there. I think he's going to be too far back. Yeah. I think he might be. Car looked a bit, a little bit loose on the exit as well. It's going to be Dan Hunt then takes the final race win of the evening. Awesome drive by them. Great battle. Van Gool and McIntyre just side by side over the line. McIntyre takes third, rounding out your podium. And it's Van Gool, Cooper, Davis, Williams, Cooper, Cherney, McNally. Oh. Out top. oh, three wide there between Summers and Beryl Smith, and uh, that would have been Ashton as well, I believe, involved in that one. Awesome stuff by those guys. Steve Hefford trying that cut back again. He's on Scott Malcolm. He's going to do it, I think. Side by side. Is that damage going to affect him in a straight line? I think he might just be ahead, and he's done it. Yeah, Steve Hefford just beat Scott Malcolm to the line there for 23rd place. Nice little formation finish with the automatic cars there as well. But that just shows it. No matter where you are in the field, Alex, we've seen battles all up and down tonight that have been very exciting. Great nice racing. What can you say? Again, those couple of little incidents, but nothing more than what we expected here. Just honest, good, great battling out there. Good one from Dan Hunt. He made that, didn't he, all on that that one lap where he got that heck of an overspeed and got involved, yeah. got a couple of places. That really gave him that chance to, to go on and win that. So, Brian give it all he could, but couldn't quite get through on that final lap. So, yeah, top notch. Just shows as well, like, what sort of difference and what a difference it can make to a race just one maneuver and one opportunistic part of a lap you, you just get one thing right you take the correct risk and you go for a move that some people might not even consider as a move that's being on and you can win a race because of it and Dan Hunt showed that really well tonight and it was it was a mature drive and a very well deserved win I reckon final drive to cross the line before we can bring up the points well, here we go Dan Hunt then takes the win, as we say. Brian Holmes only three tenths back in the end. Oh, that was a car that was crabbing in the background. Not sure who that was. Jack McIntyre's third. Peter Van Gogh fourth. Kip Stevens fifth with Nathan Davis in sixth. Craig Williams seventh. Jason Cooper eighth. Alex Cherney in ninth. And Adam McNally rounds out the top ten for the youth energy. Luke Cooper and his teammate Charlie Summers are eleventh and twelfth. Anwar Smith thirteenth. Jack Ashton fourteenth. Look at the gap between those boys there. There's only uh, six thousandths of a second between Anwar and Jack there. I mean, that's through... Yeah, I just sorry. I mean, that's three second, three and a half seconds to eleventh, and then yeah, like you say, that those three, that was ridiculous as well. That is just crazy. All within half a tenth as well. That's brilliant. And then Joe McDonald actually wins the AM category in that race. Well done to Joe. Max Wright sixteenth overall. Ryan Walker seventeenth. Not seen much of Ryan tonight. To be fair, he got caught up in that incident race one, and I think that sort of tainted the rest of his results, didn't it, over the course of the night? Yeah, I think so. Your own Ersam second in AM there. Craig Williams celebrating across the line in the background. Josh Thompson is 19th, David Ayres is 20th, Carl Hardy 21st, with Peter Knowles in 22nd. So 22 finishes, well, sorry, number 222 finishes in position 22. Steve Efford 23rd, we saw him just get that at the end. Scott Malcolm 24th, Benjamin Mears 25th, Mikey Key is 26th, with his teammate Craig Jones behind him in 27th. Jamie Ayres and Nick McCarron for Momo 28th and 29th, they won't be too pleased with those results. 
Alan McCain is 30th and the last car on the lead lap. Three laps down, then you've got Jordan Giddings, James McRitchie, who has the best YouTube username in the world at the moment, I think. Anthony Mott, 33rd. Carl Jackal at 34th. Tyler Lugo Vickery is 35th. And David Hampson, real shame to see him down there because he was having such a great evening on his... Uh, on what I believe, I've said it a couple of times, I believe is his debut in this series. He, he did a great job in the first few races. Mick Barry, 37th. And Mikel Garcia is the final car in 38th place. And you can see the clouds and clouds of smoke in the pit lane in the background. Where... Uh, People have inevitably, inevitably been celebrating, and that is one of the Momo cars <laughs> crabbing like mad. I'm not sure whether you caught that, Alex, but it's, I a, it's, it's a very, very sideways car that's going around the track. I'm not, I think it might have been Nick McCarran, actually, but it was literally about 45 degrees to the, uh, the surface. Just a quick one as well on the screen, as you can see. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, uh, button of course, if I can get my words out, and uh, give the video a thumbs up, and be sure to be notified of future videos as well that come up. Obviously, the iRacing and Esports Network giving us a fantastic opportunity to broadcast for you tonight. We're very grateful for it. It's been a joy, as always. And I believe, because of the, uh, the issues with the session earlier, Alex, we may be out of time already. We've run over quite a bit, haven't we? We have indeed. But we really appreciate everyone being around tonight. It's been fantastic to watch from our view. We hope everyone's enjoyed it at home as well. Um, just trying to see where we are next week. I do this every single week. I, I struggle to find it towards the end of the year. Uh, Daytona. Broadcast. And, well, that's going to be an interesting one. Yet again, more slipstreaming for these MX-5s. You see Jack McIntyre flinging it around as well. Um, but, yeah, really a, a bigger uh, opportunity for them to slipstream as well there, Alex. It should be quite feisty, especially on the if we're doing the infield as well with uh, the tighter corners around there. Oh, it's just the... No, yeah, you're right. They are doing the infield. So, But, yeah, I think it'll be good. But, uh, yeah, and you're right. The slipstream is going to be so important. And I think Daytona was the... Basically, where we saw our closest ever finish, which actually was into the, was it the tens of thousands yeah. that, uh, that that it was? So yeah, more uh, more of a, a great recipe for uh, some fantastic action. Then, so from me and Alex, and from everyone on the iRacing Esports Network, we wish you a very good night. See you next time. Presentation of the iRacing Esports Network.